What's up guys, Justin here with thesekitchenessentials.com. So in this video, we're gonna go through and we're gonna model a kitchen and I'm gonna hit some of the highlights of some of the important things you need to know to model great looking cabinets and spaces like this. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so when I model a space like this, what I really like to do is I like to use a template cabinet and then kind of modify the template cabinet over and over again because cabinet modeling is so um, repetitive um, i like to have these kind of like pre-built and ready to go now i personally have pre-built dynamic components that i've built and so i like to start with the carcass or just like the simple shape um, and kind of like rough out the space and figure out where the boxes are going to go. And then from there I can add the doors and other things like that. Now within the cabinet essentials course, which is something that's currently on sale through end of day Wednesday, um, I have my own dynamic cabinet library that you can download and bring into SketchUp. So if you are looking for like a collection of these that you can work with, this is definitely a good place to do that. But you can kind of do this however you want, right? You could build a base cabinet and then just repeat it and then kind of use the uh, stretchiness of the geometry or the stickiness of the geometry in order to resize things. But this is how I like to start. It makes getting the space figured out really easy and these are all kind of adjustable and kind of dynamic. And so that's where I start is I just take all of these and I just put them in place and I just size them to the size that I want them to be. And so when I'm modeling out drawers, what I like to do is I like to use the divide function um, associated with the line tool. So because I need to find basically like an equal spacing for all three drawers in this case, so I may adjust that later. What I'll do is I'll draw a line from wherever I think the top cabinet or the top drawer is going to be. So in this case, it's going to have like an eighth of an inch reveal around the outside, but then I'll draw a line down to the bottom to an eighth of an inch to the bottom. And then what you can do is you can right click on this and you can divide it. And what that does is it gives you the ability to see like, okay, if this was equally spaced, how long would these different segments be? And then I'll come in here with guides and I'll go down a 16th and up a 16th of an inch so that I can get the proper reveal size. And that gives me something I can scale my dynamic components to. Even if you don't have dynamic components, though, it still gives you a point where it's like, okay, the top of your drawer door should be here. Um, the bottom of your drawer door should be here so that you have the proper spacing. So I'll use the line tool and the divide function in order to do that. And so once I get the boxes where I think that they're going to go, that's when I come in and I start modeling out the doors. And again, I have door dynamic components that I've built that allow you to adjust like the, uh, they allow you to adjust the size of the styles and rails and also the uh, spacing. So I have them for both single doors and double doors. Um, I use these a lot because I can just bring them in. I can just scale them and you're done. I don't have to like manually draw a whole bunch of doors, but even if you do manually draw the doors, what you're going to do is you're going to draw a rectangle rectangle and then offset it in um, a little bit so that you've got the proper reveal size and then you'll just extrude it to 3D. And I keep all of these kind of grouped as separate objects so that the geometry is not merging together. That grouping is going to be really important, right? It's something that's going to be massively important for um, making sure that your geometry doesn't merge together. So I like to group everything by type. So I'll have cabinet boxes, I'll have cabinet doors, I'll have hardware, um, all grouped by type. That way I can toggle them on and off using a tag. But I'll go through and I'll just add the doors to the outside of these boxes. So if you're looking for like a true step-by-step, -step, like every single step of the process tutorial, I do that inside of the Cabinet Essentials course. You can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash cabinets. Um, so that is something that I have. But for this video, I want to focus on some of the highlights of the modeling process. Okay, so next up, I want to add the countertops. And in my library, I have my own profiles for countertops in here that are the different styles that I would like. And what I can do is I can just double click on that. And remember that you can right click on SketchUp and open up a second SketchUp window just by clicking on SketchUp Pro. Um, when you right click on it, it'll pop up a second SketchUp window. Well, then all I have to do is I just have to take these profiles, put them in place, and then I'll use the follow me tool in order to extrude my countertop profile around the corner. So it gives me this nice like extrude extrusion around the corner. Um, and then I can just use the profile again on the little cabinet on the end. So um, I like to keep the cabinets all in their own group um, so that I can toggle them on and off separately. Or I like to keep the counters in their own group separately from the cabinet so that I can toggle them on and off if I need to. 
And so when I'm working with cabinets, a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll use the flip tool in copy mode or the move tool in copy mode in order to reuse things. Because the name of the game with cabinets is to reduce rework as much as possible. The problem with cabinets is you're just doing the same thing over and over and over again. So what we're trying to do is cut out as many of those steps as possible. So if your cabinets are all the same width, for example, then um, you can just use the move tool in copy mode and you can just copy the doors across between the different cabinets. So instead of you going through and manually modeling a door for every single cabinet, if you've spaced out the boxes or the carcasses or whatever you want to call them already, then it's just a question of, okay, do I want to flip this and use the flip tool in copy mode or do I want to use the move tool in copy mode in order to do that? So that can be a massive time saver. It's just the way that you copy things across using the move tool in copy mode. And so another thing you want to make sure that you're doing is you want to make sure, and I get more in depth on the grouping and how it affects your scenes and everything and layout in the course as well, but you want to at least make sure that you're grouping objects as um, by their type and then you're adding a tag so that you can toggle them off because especially as you get further in there's a bunch of reasons why you might need to toggle toggle off your doors or you might need to toggle off your cabinets or um, one of the things that really bothers me is when I start adding walls in here and then I kind of orbit around they really get in the way but if you group those objects and then you add a tag to them um, then what you can do is you can toggle them all on and off so that you can see what you need to see or not see what you need to see because the name of the game is isolation, right? Being able to isolate whatever you need, not only now with your view, but also later on when you start bringing things into layout. Okay, and so whenever you add something like a sink, um, what you can do is, first of all, I get all of my appliances and 3D objects from the 3D warehouse. Like I very rarely model a sink or a refrigerator or anything like that. I just use what's in the warehouse and make sure that it matches the dimensions of whatever I want to use in the real world. Um, you, you can kind of do whatever you want with that. But for me, I think the warehouse is a great resource and it saves me a bunch of time. But in this case, what I'll do is I'll pick a sink. I'll bring the sink in and then I'll use the intersect faces with model command with my countertop in order to cut a hole for that sink. So you can just, uh, once you drop this object in the proper place, you can triple click on all the faces in your countertop do a right click and intersect faces with model. And when you do that, what that's going to do is that's going to intersect everything and make it so you can delete out these extra faces so that you have a hole in your countertop. Okay, so hardware um, is something where I might pull hardware out of the 3D warehouse or if it's something simple, I might just model it myself. It just kind of depends on what you're going for. So in this case, I'm going to make these very simple. So it's just a shape that I can model myself and I'm just modifying one that I had previously. Um, but it's just three boxes basically. It doesn't even need to be three boxes with something like this if you extrude it properly. But you know, since they're generally all kind of the same size, you just need to get one to the proper size size, then you can just copy it over and over again. And this is another place where um, paying attention to like the base point that you have when you use the move tool in copy mode can make placing this a lot easier. So like for example, if I have a lower left corner object, I'll just pick a base point on a lower left corner of a counter or I'm sorry, of a cabinet door. And I'll just use that as my base point for where I place this. And so basically I just try to place it relative to the same spot on the door over and over again. And so it's not modeling over and over. It's just picking the right thing and then copying it and putting it in place. And so a lot of the time, if I have something like an island, um, what I'll do is I'll just model out kind of an enclosure. Um, so maybe like three quarter inch plywood or five inch inch plywood or whatever. Um, and then I'll also add some wood detailing to it. But um, when I model this, what I'll do is I'll just also group this and then tag it. So all of the like trim and everything will all go in a group and I'll call it something like uh, architectural cladding or something. I'll tag it and then I can toggle it off if I need to get in there and adjust the actual, uh, if I need to adjust the actual um, cabinets themselves. But the other thing that I'll do is I'll group this out where the trim is inside of the overall cladding group, but it's also its own group so that I can apply material to it really quickly. So if you've got like cladding and then trim inside of the cladding, all that trim, you can just apply a material to it and it'll show up on all of the trim. So use your grouping in order to prep your model to receive materials. And so when I start adding materials, 99% of the time, the first place that I go is the architectures extension. You can download it for free 
inside of uh, the SketchUp Extension Warehouse, it's going to give you access to their full library of materials. And there's a ton of materials in here. They're way better than the base SketchUp materials. So massive fan of architectures. And I pretty much always use this unless I need something crazy that isn't in this library, which 99% of the time is not the case. So these are all editable and adjustable, but highly recommend you at least give the free version of this a try because it's totally worth it for your materials. And so one of the things I use a lot of if I'm trying to like replicate um, some kind of actual product. So in this case, right, if we look at like the furniture, um, what I want is I want to match some metal chairs. Well, there's an image search function built into the 3D warehouse that you can use in order to search for a certain type of chair or type of object. You just pop an image in there and it'll go search for models that match that image. I use this all the time to find uh, things that actually match like a visual style or a product because there's a ton of stuff inside of the 3D warehouse um, that's already been pre-modeled that you can use. It's probably one of the best things about SketchUp is access to this giant library of pre-made models. So I'll use this in order to go find the models that I want. Then I'll bring them in and I'll put them in a group so that I can toggle them on and off. Same thing for light fixtures. Now what I find with light fixtures is usually you're going to have to do some kind of modification, but most light fixtures are set up in a way where like the, um, the mount on the ceiling is movable and then you can also adjust the object that's hanging down. So you can kind of adjust these um, in order to fit inside of your model. So I'll bring them in, I'll place them, and then I'll adjust them so that they have the proper height. So you're usually going to have to do some kind of modification, especially for hanging lights. Obviously not that big of a deal for things like can lights. You can just drop them on the surface. And by the way, most of the time I don't cut holes for can lights or anything like that. I just drop them on the surface of the ceiling. That way I can just indicate where the lights are going to be without having to do a whole bunch a ceiling modification. Remember, only model what people are going to see because it's not really worth doing a whole lot of extra work to add detail that no one else is going to see in your model. And so all my furnishings and like extras, so like my entourage items are all things that I bring in from the 3D warehouse. Again, there's no reason for me to go try to model fruit or like bowls, they're all in the warehouse. So you, you can just look for them and then bring them in. Now, the only thing to pay attention to when you're doing this though, you wanna make sure you're not bringing in something that's just like massive, 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 right? Like millions of faces and tons of megabytes of stuff. So just pay attention to the size of the objects as you're bringing them in. So um, a, a lot of the time you, know, you can find like collections of kitchen objects or something like that. Um, so the one I end up bringing in in this video, I think is about like 24 megabytes or something something like that. It's a little bigger than I would usually like, but what I do is I bring those in, I'll place them, and then I'll put them on their own tags so I can toggle them off, right? I want to be able to toggle them off from a performance standpoint when I'm not using it so that you don't have all that extra geometry from like an apple slowing down your model because it's just not worth it. So things like wall tile, I'll also draw as like a separate box on top of a wall. And what, what I like to do with something like this is I like to give it a little bit of thickness. So I'll just draw a box on here and then I'll go through and I'll kind of like block it out where the cabinets are so that I'm not getting thickness behind cabinets or anything like that. But then I'll just push pull these out a little bit because if you don't give them thickness, you get this kind of like flashing Z fighting, which you don't really want, right? So you see when I orbit around, it's kind of flashing a little bit. Well, as soon as I give this thickness, that won't be the case because then you won't have two faces occupying the same space anymore. So I'll draw this on my surface, making sure to put it in a group, and then I'll tag it with like an architectural wall tile item or something like that. So I can toggle it on and off, but it's actually got that thickness in here so that you're not getting the Z fighting and flashing. Then once I've got everything modeled out, that's when I go through and I set up my different views, right? So I like to set up a view that has all the effects turned on. So like the ambient occlusion, other things like that. I really like to do that. Um, I like to save both working views and also presentation views so that I can get back to the presentation views that look really good um, really quickly. So I'll also go through and I'll add things like section planes and create elevations, which I can then take into layout. All right. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Hopefully it was helpful to you. It's kind of a new concept concept that I'm trying out, but leave a comment below. Let me know your cabinet tips in the comments down below. If you do want to learn more about this process, you can check it out in the cabinet essentials, which is currently on sale for lifetime access through end of the day, Wednesday at the sketchup essentials.com slash cabinets. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.